Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss... I thought this was my video. In case you don't know, this is my lovely wife, Teresa, and she's right. This is her video. And today, I'm gonna have some fun and share with you 11 things that Raphael is terrible at. Really? Okay. <laughs> Chances are you have never seen Teresa before, unless you've watched a Table Manners video. Teresa and I, we're 50-50 business partners, not just in life, but also in the Gentleman's Gazette. And uh, initially, when we started YouTube, she was actually behind the camera, and I was in front of the camera. These days, things have changed a bit, but uh, if you look at our early videos, that was her work. So we all know that it's easy to present ourselves as perfect online. So what are I you thought, talking about? Yeah, so I thought, who is better qualified to share what Raphael is terrible at than me, his wife? My mom. <laughs> your mom, but your mom's not here. So today I'm gonna share those 11 things with you, starting with speaking quietly. Raphael is terrible at speaking quietly. What do you mean? <laughs> we have this concept of indoor voice and outdoor voice, and Raphael always uses his outdoor voice. Except when we're filming, because then Preston is louder than I am. That's true. Preston is louder there. So, but we'll 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 get to Preston's flaws in another video. Yeah. So, for example, if I come home and I can hear shouting from across the house, I'm pretty sure Raphael's talking on the phone with his family. Yeah, I'm also half Brazilian. So they talk loudly too. And my sister once proclaimed that we're just a loud family. Uh, she's so, right. Uh, you're right. The next thing that Raphael is terrible at is not interrupting. And I think you were probably not surprised that I'm saying that here and you will be dutiful in not interrupting for the rest of this video. But it is very much a, a family trait. They, his whole family talks loudly, they talk over each other. And if you want to get a word in edgewise, Interrupting is her only way to go. Yeah, Teresa definitely hates it when I interrupt her, but um, it is hard, and I think gentlemen shouldn't do that, and we've covered it many right. times, right. but um, it's definitely something that doesn't come naturally to me. I have to be a lot more aware, but uh, I'll do my best. <laughs> Yeah, I know you do your best. I just tell him I didn't want to finish that sentence anyway, and then he knows he's interrupted. <laughs> yeah, or sometimes she kind of pokes me in the thigh, or in my chin. And... No, no, your shin. Oh, yes, shin. <laughs> I'm Not apparently chin. more flexible than I thought. <laughs> I'm gonna kick you in the chin. But uh, yeah, when she does it, I know what she means by it. Exactly, exactly. She basically brings out the best in me. Aw. As an example of how Raphael struggles not to interrupt people, just last night, we were out with our whole team, with Preston, with Chris, our videographer, and Chris was telling us about his weekend plans, and Raphael interrupts to tell us how bad his cocktail was from earlier in the evening. I mean, it was really bad. It was really bad. It was just, I went to Manhattan and I got like a bourbon with a vermouth, but for some reason I was thinking about it, and there was this conversation, and I just chimed in, totally interrupting everything. And the others were just looking at each other like, what is he talking about? In addition to the interruption, yes. So overall, definitely one of my skills to change topics without the other people knowing about it. The third thing that Raphael is terrible at is waiting in line. What? No. <laughs> Just in general, Raphael is not a very patient person when he feels like his time can be spent <laughs> better elsewhere, which is pretty much everywhere you have to wait in line. So waiting in line at the grocery store, he rolls his eyes, he gets antsy, he says, oh, this is stupid, they should open more checkout lanes. It's, it's, it's full body annoyance for yeah. Raphael. I mean, I guess, you know, it's good to have a phone, right? That helps. A little or bit if you check out things. I definitely uh, look at the other lanes, check out lanes to figure out, may I be faster there? Yes, that is one thing that is a skill that has come out of this thing that you're terrible at, is that you are masterful at picking the shortest line. Yeah, I think also in Germany, when you go to a grocery store, it's kind of a national sport to be really, really quick. People don't waste time, they don't 
ask how you are versus here there may be like 30 people behind you and they're taking all the sweet time in the world they're asking about how your day is. exactly and then oh wait a second oh would you like a different fruit let me go get it for you and then five minutes later 50 more people are behind them all annoyed <laughs> and it's still not checked out so and Raphael's laying on the floor kicking his feet exactly I'd rather leave and go to Instacart instead or something <laughs> So a great example of Raphael's inability to wait in line for something was we were in Seattle a few years ago and we were going to go up in the Space Needle. We got tickets for later in the day and you couldn't bear to wait. Yeah, it was like they give you a ticket and you have to buy it there and it's like three hours out. But we wanted to take photos and by the time we were going up there, the sun would have been down. So I just talked to the guy and said, hey, you know, came here all the way from Germany. You may have uh, laid the accent on a little thick. Maybe, but at the same time, <laughs> Teresa, she was so embarrassed. She told me, no, we can't go up there because it says we have to go at that time. I was so hiding. She was so embarrassed was that she was moving away, like at least like <laughs> 30 yards and just looking at it. And so when I was talking to him, it was just very friendly. And oh, he was like, all the way from Germany okay, for this. I can let, you wouldn't know because you weren't there, but <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but he was, he said, okay, I can guys let you in. And then we all went up there. Right. So I'm always trying to work the system. I don't take a no for an answer. No, I'll that's just, true. And that, yeah, it, it, it hears me interrupting, by the way, but uh, that benefits you in many ways. In fact, even though Raphael can't wait in line, his persistent badgering actually enables some of these uh, delightful flaws that you have. And in this case, we were all rewarded when you managed to get us a headline. The fourth thing that Raphael is terrible at is empathy. Raphael is a very independent, self-determined person, and it's not exactly a skill of his to be able to put himself in other people's shoes. I think I've definitely gotten better at it. That's true. And we do these personality tests. 2% is better than zero. Well, according to personality <laughs> tests, I think it's a little higher. But I agree, Teresa is a very empathetic person who has very good social antennas. And while I'm trying to get better at it, she's ways ahead of me. But I think that's just plays to our natural strengths, right? That's not what you're good at. It's what I'm good at. So we work in our business together in a way that 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 works out. At the same time, I think you need to have like a minimum level because otherwise you're just perceived as a d who doesn't care about others. And that's just not what a gentleman should be about, right? Right. The fifth thing that Raphael is terrible at is actually very similar to the previous one in that he is terrible at managing people, which is very interesting for a CEO of a company. We have 12 employees who work for us all over the world. And we have to manage them all in some way. Yeah. And I mean, you know, in reality, right, we get to a certain point. But then I realized... Just by you alone, that is true. We got, we got almost exactly to where we are today with you managing people. But in general, you like to do your work and you like people to leave you alone so that you can get to all of the things that are on your plate as a CEO. Exactly. And it's part of the growth. I realized that I just... Or, I mean, it's a multi-step process, right? At first, I realized I can't do it all myself, so I needed to hire other people. But ideally, I would just like to tell them what to do, not micromanage them, and just let them go. That also means I'm not going to kind of give them a review or show them how their work is meaningful, which down the line is just not really helpful. Now, you were a lot better at that. And so we just figured, wow, well, if I'm not good at it and you're good at it, let's transfer all of that your way so I'm happier, I can do what I'm good at, and, and you can do what you're good at, and you like it a lot better too, right? I do, I like it a lot better. And as you can tell, I, I clearly wrote this script so that Raphael can tell me all the things that I'm good at. <laughs> the sixth thing that Raphael is terrible at is saying the positive as well as the negative. So he comes from Germany, and in Germany, they do tend to be a bit more direct about the negative things in life. But sometimes that's hard when you're not also getting the positives as well as the negatives. Yeah, in Germany, usually you don't get the compliment sandwich right away. Versus here, it's like, or it all. hey, very true, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes when we call my, my parents, and they're like, oh, what happened to you? You look sick. Did you gain a little weight? And Teresa's just there like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, we just they don't hello. mean it that way. They just notice it and just right. share it. Right. Raphael is fiercely independent. And that means 
he doesn't really need the encouragement and praise of other people. So it's really not in your nature to offer it. The flip side is a lot of people come to you for a truly unsugar-coated opinion. Yeah, I think I'm not someone who just gives out praise very easily unless I truly think it's warranted. So for some people, that means they feel like I'm pointing out more of the negatives and I'm less touchy-feely. I'm more matter-of-factly. But um, yeah, they value this opinion when all the other people say, oh, that's amazing and it's great. I'm more like, how is that going to make money? <laughs> exactly. Very matter of fact. The seventh thing that Raphael is terrible at is keeping his opinions to himself. If Raphael has an opinion, he's going to share it, whether you want to hear it or not. Yeah, I'm a talker, I guess. Um, I definitely feel that I'm constraining myself sometimes. I know it may not seem <laughs> like try, it to you, you but uh, I definitely have opinions and I'm not afraid of conflict or sharing them. I'm I would say in general, very talkative. So yeah, I'll let you know what I think. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> to the extent that I'm happy to actually hide behind you in certain <laughs> conflicted situations yeah. because you handle it so well. So a great example of this is we were once in a hat store and the salesman at this haberdashery was showing you a hat from Dobbs and he claimed that this was one of the best hats in the world. No, no, no. He said the best hat in the world. He said the best hat in the world, to which you promptly replied, No, they're absolutely not the best hats in the world. And the horrified look on this man's face, I will never forget. And this is a perfect example of the polite thing would have been not to say anything, but Raphael is definitely going to tell you what he thinks. Exactly. And I could have backed it up too, right? He was just trying to make a bold statement not expecting me to know about different felt qualities. But um, yeah, in those cases, I definitely share my opinion. Right, right. The lesson here is generally not to challenge you on your, <laughs> your, your menswear knowledge because Gaffi will probably win. The eighth thing that Raphael is terrible at is caring about what other people think. Wait a minute, isn't it a good thing? It can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing. I think for YouTube, it's a great thing because it means you're just Teflon when it comes to all the different comments that come along. But for example, once when we were dating, he asked me if he should tuck his shirt in. I told him he shouldn't tuck his shirt in and you and promptly- And I promptly tucked it in. Tucked it in, exactly. I probably at the time just felt it was better. I mean, it was stupid <laughs> of me to ask you for the opinion when I had my agenda anyways. And I think I've, I've gotten better over time. But uh, yeah, if you ask someone, if you should do something and they give you an answer and you disregard it, I mean, there's not many ways you can make that other person feel more superfluous, right? The ninth thing that Raphael is terrible at is leaving enough time to get dressed. Now, wait. Yes, yes, yes. Now I like to be on time for things. Gaffi doesn't care so much about that, but you would think that a man who loves fashion as much as he does would enjoy a long, leisurely process of getting dressed. But I would say a good 95% of the time, it's just not true. Yeah, the funny thing is though with Teresa, it's like when you get ready, right? It's like someone gets ready and uh, you know, makeup, everything takes a, a lot more time. So when I'm ready, I don't just sit there and wait for her, I'll do something else. And then when she gets ready, um, she's like, I'm ready. And, and says like, I'm waiting for you. So. I guess we're both late sometimes. I'm, I agree with you. I'm not someone who spends two hours getting dressed. I sometimes put outfits together very quickly. It's and that not, means that they're from the top of the pile. That can happen, absolutely. <laughs> that being said, I always try to come up with unique combinations. I have yeah. all the ties right there. And that's something it's you're really like... good at, even on short notice. But I just think it would surprise people to know that if you have five minutes, you, you'll leave five minutes to get dressed. Yeah. And Maybe two. Yeah. And Teresa is American, right? So sometimes there's a tendency of slightly over exaggerating. But uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. I, I agree you Germans with her. are just the truth tellers of the world. <laughs> The 10th thing that Raphael is terrible at is following rules or instructions created by somebody else. So it could be a recipe, it could be assembly instructions. I think that you think you can do things a little bit better. Well, I think you're right when it comes to rules. I'm not a rule follower. 
I'll try to game the system and figure out a way to do it differently. That's maybe within the rules, but not the way it was intended to be. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I can put IKEA furniture together quickly. I can follow recipes and do them pretty well. I mean, it's nothing like our friend Michael, for example. <laughs> I'm sure he's gonna enjoy the shout out. Michael, you suck at putting together IKEA furniture. <laughs> <laughs> The 11th and final thing that Raphael is terrible at is throwing anything away from his wardrobe. So, I agree. as you can imagine, Raphael's wardrobe is a precious curated thing for him and it is next to impossible for you to throw something away. And as exhibit A, I have a more than 10 year old shirt here from Cineskalki, which I know you love, that you can see that this is falling apart on the collar, on the cuffs, it's got stains, it's just shredded, but yeah. yet it was still in your My closet. Wardrobe, yeah, and I like to wear them, you know, when you cook in the garden or something like that, so it doesn't get dirty. That being said, specifically the shirts, for example, uh, Francesco Bauris Canonico, he wears these kind of shirts with his suits, and he has lots of money, he doesn't need that. Now, I'm not quite that far. When shirts are in that state, I you usually- You don't wear them. I, I don't wear them with my suit or with my jacket, but I, I still keep them, and yeah, I agree. I'm not good at throwing things away. And I, I purge things every once in a while, socks or underwear or even shirts, but um, with By that these he kind means of shirts. Once every 10 years. Well, maybe a little more often, but if I throw this away, I'd actually, I'd save the buttons because they're nice mother of pearl buttons. And I knew that's what you were going to tell exactly. me is, don't throw it away. I want to cut the buttons off. Exactly. Or sometimes, you know, the, the cotton on the body is still good. You can use it for shoe shining. But um, in general, I, I'm not a wasteful person. So uh, <laughs> keeping things and, and trying to make the most out of it is definitely something. And in our basement, we had these old pipes that were insulated with asbestos. And they actually used some of the old shirts to wrap everything I so it see. wouldn't kind of blow up. So yeah, we repurposed those old shirts in some ways. Raphael is really good at finding the most obscure possible justification for keeping things in his wardrobe. So hey, we're in all case you need to insulate your asbestos pipes, send us an email and we'll send you some old shirts. You're not gonna throw it away, are you? Oh yeah. I'm oh, gonna no. throw it away, buttons and all. No. Oh, that is <laughs> You're gonna put it in the that garbage can where it belongs.